You're now tuned in to It's BM Radio, powered by Indie Republic. Due to some violent content, parental discretion is advised. Well, whatever helps you sleep at night, bitch. Come on, man, call a crackhead, tell him get about the house, stop breaking in the houses and try to steal some internet Wi-Fi and all that. You know what it is, man. We in the hood like chicken wings and french fries, nigga. Get your paper up, get your internet up, and get on this BMRadio.com. Yeah! Cyber's a puto. Tuned in to It's BM Radio at itsbmradio.com. That's I T Z B M Radio. Radio. Alright, so once again, we're back up in the building. Sajin Mayhem Tyler from It's BM Radio, Beyond Mayhem Media. You can make sure you get out there. Check out our new home at Sajin.com where you can tune into It's BM Radio. And of course, you can check out our new video portion of the show, which is at YouTube. Go to YouTube.com forward slash Sajin Tyler. We'll be dropping in videos on a weekly basis for y'all, giving you tons of content and basically displaying my mayhem point of view of all the mayhem shit that be going on in the world with music, topics, current events, you name it. Sometimes we'll have some guests. Maybe Sajin will have some... Uh, you know, some sex, who knows, anything can happen when it's mayhem. But yeah, let's talk real quick. Shout out to Indie Republic, all the people that support us. Shout out to all the viewers. And also make sure if you can get out there and check us out on the YouTube, leave a like, give us some comments, give us some feedbacks, anything that you want to hear specifically on the show, you know, uh, give us a shout and we'll see if we can uh, get that type of material or content on the show for you. Uh, speaking of which, also event wise, you got to come out April 30th. It's going down. Making Money Entertainment presents the red carpet affair yes we are back april to basically october the last saturday of every month there's always a yacht event going down with making money entertainment the first event is saturday april 30th it's the red carpet affair on the cabana that's the yacht it's called the cabana it's at the skyport and aviation marina at east 23rd street and fdr drive new york new york zip code 10010 uh the boat starts boarding around 10 30 p.m so please make sure you're on time or try to get there a little bit before this way you can get on uh, and board the yacht uh, you know, without having to deal with the crowd. Uh, once again, Skyport and Aviation Marina, East 23rd Street and FDR Drive in New York, New York. Tickets are $35 in advance, rain or shine. This yacht is temperature controlled, okay? Which means if it's hot, they got AC, which means if it rains, they do provide, um, you know, there's proper shelter and all that stuff. There's canopies that cover you. You don't have to get affected by the weather and still enjoy an amazing yacht cruise, okay? It's a two-floor yacht with DJs, hookah, and of course, free food, all right? It's stylish and sexy attire, okay? So don't be showing up with Tim's or nothing like that. Come out, wear a nice collared shirt. Ladies, wear a nice dress or outfit. Come out to the event, have a great time. The event is 21 and up. And please remember, once again, it's stylish and sexy. They do have the right to be selected. Okay. Uh, if you'd like to get tickets, uh, you can give me a call 973-273-3744, or you can hit up my email at sajintyler at hotmail.com. Okay. That's S-A-Y-J-I-N-T-Y-L-E-R at hotmail.com for more further information. If you're also a DJ, you're a promoter, or if you're an artist who wants to participate in the boat, uh, you can make some money. If you can bring out a crowd, you can get involved with the event. Uh, and you can contact me once again at 973-273-3744 or hit up the email at sajintyler at hotmail.com. Okay. So make sure you check out that event. Once again, Saturday, April 30th, Making Money Entertainment presents the Red Carpet Affair. Now, let's jump into some news real quick. Okay. We're going to talk about some interesting, interesting stuff that we had found online, some news articles and stuff like that, some videos as well, too. Um, one of the most, I mean, this is the most, one of the most funniest things of this week is there's a particular guy who possibly might get 20 years, okay, to life because Homeboy was stealing some motherfucking candy from the, the local bodega store okay now this particular gentleman this the, the article is called candy theft that could mean king size sentence 20 years to life um now this is in new orleans a louisiana man accused of stuffing 31 dollars okay now this is just 31 dollars worth of candy bars okay this guy put 31 
uh, $31 worth of candy bars into his pockets and can possibly face up to 20 years to life in prison, uh, prompting a judge to question whether, you know, everyone is prompting uh, uh, in reference to this judge if this penalty is too severe. Now, I am not going to lie to you straight off the bat, 20 years for stealing some motherfucking candy, and we got all the other crazy shit that's going on in the world, you know what I'm saying? We got people causing murder, you got dirty politicians, you know, nobody's getting 20 years to life for any of that shit, but here you got a particular guy, you know, no one really knows the situation and what was really going on to why he took the candy bars, obviously he's hungry, who knows, he might have been selling them. You know, no one really knows, but this was the most craziest thing that I've ever heard in my life. Okay. Uh, once again, 20 years to life for just stealing some candy. Okay. Which is crazy, crazy, insane. Okay. Um, allegedly, <laughs> this shit this just makes me laugh. Allegedly, um, Orlando's, his, his Orleans Parish prosecutors choose to charge his name is uh jacobia grimes the 34 year old man uh under a stature that boosts the alleged candy theft to a felony okay the law applies to people who have been convicted of the theft of goods at least twice okay um so obviously grimes has committed this particular crime more than once all right uh grimes actually has five prior convictions making him a quad Okay, he's a quad. Uh, they call that a quad offender under the state's habitual offenders law. Okay, so this is one of the main reasons why he will be dealing with these certain circumstances in regards to his sentencing. Okay, now if it was one time, okay, fine. Still, in any regards, I would like to know if this is if all the other crimes that he committed were in regards to stealing candy, or was this the first time? Okay, that he stole candy, and then the other previous convictions uh, that he committed, or the other uh, crimes that he committed where he was convicted of, um, were di were different scenarios or different situations. I really don't know 100%. Like I said, the article itself is only. You know, it only contains so much information, okay? But once again, possible to get 20 years to life for stealing $31 worth of motherfucking candy. This guy had to have been high. He smoked like 20 fucking blunts, got to the store, went crazy. Maybe he just didn't realize that he just kept stuffing his pockets, saw some good shit. Oh, some Snickers. Let me get some granddaddy. Let me get some this. Let me get some Tootsie Rolls. Let me get some motherfucking... You know, some some fuzz balls and some snow bunnies, whatever the fuck you guys call these candy shit, some gummy bears, gummy bitches. But yeah, once again, thirty-one dollars worth is gonna put this man away for twenty years to life. That shit is ridiculous. Motherfucking that's mayhem, if you ask me. Um, so we're gonna take a quick music break okay i'll be right back uh we're gonna take a quick music break and we got something a little special for you um i'm gonna play a dope 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 video from a very amazing dope artist representing out of new jersey all right her name is uh baby all right uh this is actually baby featuring i hope i'm saying this name what is this pr3 pa3 pr3 p all right, so we got Bebe featuring, I think that's supposed to be Prepe. These motherfuckers be spelling their names crazy. Listen to how they spell it. It's P-R-3-P-E. So I don't know what the fuck to say. This. You know what I'm saying? Reading this, I don't even know what to say. It looks like Prepe or is it P-R-3-P-E? I don't know. Um, of course, it's got Jazzy Joyce on it, which is pretty dope, too. And this is Bebe um, representing with Block Stars Entertainment, my boy Zenof Star. Shout out to Zenof Star on the Trap House Rock Show. You can check them out on Tuesday nights, 10 p.m. till 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time at eventlevel.com. It's got a dope show, uh, of course, that's with Miss LB and their whole entourage. It's Trap House Rock Show. You need to check it out. Um, but we're going to take this quick music break. This track is called Queen Shit. All right, queen shit. So enjoy the mayhem. We'll be right back. Let's check out this video. Join my mayhem. What's your name? Baby. Queen shit. Queen 
Sajin Mayhem Tyler. That was Bebe, representing from New Jersey. Dope Liverpool female artist doing her thing. I can't wait to get this girl up on the show, do a little interview. Me and her are going to bug the fuck out, man. But that was a dope ass video. When you're talking about production, when you're talking about quality, high quality in the video production as well, too. An amazing, amazing artist. Make sure you get out there, Google her, um, you know. Find her out on Instagram, all that. You know, it's 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 Bebe, all right. And let me help you spell the name, because my homegirl be rocking this name a little bit differently. It's not B E B E, it's B three B three. She spells the E's backwards. Okay, so make sure you get out there, check them out. Um, dope video, dope artist, man. She's got great material out there as well too. And shout out to Music Haven Studios, all right. They be doing some big things. Zenith Star, Block Stars. Um, Beat Killers, you know, that's Frankie Bad Lung, Xena Star, you know, it's ridiculous, you know what I'm saying? And they're all part of our of our network, man. I've done uh, tons of shows with these guys, man. Um, we go way back, you know what I'm saying? Bebe is actually one of the newest artists uh, affiliated with my peoples, so uh, you got to show her a lot of love, man. She's the uh, the next generation, you know what I'm saying, of, uh, of uh, dopeness. So um, we do got some more stuff we're going to talk about real quick. Um, now... This is kind of crazy. This is some video footage. Um, me and Cyber were online. Cyber is our producer. He's also the leader of Indie Republic. This motherfucker showed me this crazy ass video. Now, this is, you know, I wouldn't say it's harsh on people's eyes or whatever, but if you are the faint hearted or you a pussy, 
you know, because most of y'all motherfuckers are pussies. Um, if you don't like, you know, you gotta see it for yourself. And I'm just, I'm just warning you, okay? This is not cool. Do not try this shit at home. We are still trying to figure this out on what the fuck this guy was actually really doing or even thinking, okay? But this is a guy who actually basically is they're on a highway and he gets hit by a car he possibly gets tossed up in the air about eight or ten feet doing this crazy ass jackie chan spin like basically he was fighting bruce lee and bruce lee did this crazy ass sweep and you know jackie chan did this little spin and shit up in the air and landed on his ass all fucked up um so we're going to show you this video clip now what's crazy even more is this guy gets hit twice not just once not just one time no one. Twice. Twice, motherfuckers. He gets knocked the fuck out. Okay? So we're going to check out this video clip that we found online. I am thinking that this is somewhere in Russia, Ukraine. I used to fuck this Russian bitch. So the lettering looks a lot the same. And these motherfucking Russians, they basically have the same alphabet as us, but all their shit is backwards. Um, you think you'd find that shit in Australia, but guess what? You'll find that shit in Russia. So let's show them this video clip that we found no actually cyber found and showed me and blew my fucking mind this is this guy on the highway so we got that video clip ready mr producer mr cyber all right so here it is now there he is in the red now that's the first hit i think that's the first hit so that hit this is the second hit no that's the first hit right there let's bring that we got we're gonna watch this a couple fucking times now once again we're gonna bring it back this is the this is the first hit i guess now he gets hit. It wasn't that bad. That's not that. The second one, he gets plowed. Look at that shit. These motherfuckers. Now, I don't know if they're making a game out of this. I don't know if this is a new challenge. Or, you know, there was some, um, there was a statement made that this guy did it for YouTube, that he's a stuntman. Okay? Let me just tell you. I have never even seen a movie where they do that type of fucking stunt. You know, they usually got wires. They've got padding where you land on the floor. No one really knows what the fuck is going on. Um, you can see some of these guys just standing there on the side. And that's what makes us question as to really what's going on or whether if this was set up. Okay? Play that fucking video back. I didn't tell you to take that video away. Put that video. I want to see that motherfucker get hit. Okay? This is some good fucking quality mayhem TV. Now, once again, look at this motherfucker get hit. All right? The last time I seen a move like that was in the motherfucking Matrix with fucking Keanu Reeves. Okay? No wires, no nothing, no padding. Now, the people on the side, if you really look and pay attention to them, they're not even doing anything. And that's what makes us think that this is, you know, not that it's set up, but yeah, there's, you know, they're recording this shit. I mean, even if you look at the car that's running the video, it stops behind the other cars. So this guy was obviously trying to do some type of stunt. Um, it's some type of challenge that they might be doing over in Russia. These motherfuckers drink fucking, you know, they drink liquor made out of potatoes. I don't know how this affects the brain. I don't drink myself, but I know vodka be fucking these guys up. I want to know how much vodka this motherfucker was drinking because it's straight motherfucking mayhem. I, like I said, this shit does look set up. Like, look at the cars, actually, how they're stopping. You got a couple other cars that are stopped on the side of the road with the people just watching. If he really got hit, those people would be running to his attention, okay? People, the guys who were hitting him with the car would have came out of the car. Are you okay? Holy shit, let's call the cops. So, like I said, I don't think that this is an actual um, random incident or an accident. I think this is something they were trying to plan on doing. I'd really love to know if he actually got hurt. You know, um, who knows? I mean, I mean, to me, I would have got fucked up. You know, I would have broke some ribs. You know, I would have broke my dick, my ass. Something would have broken, possibly my nose. Um... It's some crazy ass shit, but this was a crazy ass video that we found. And of course, you can see on the upper right hand corner where, uh, and of course, the license plates, you know, it's definitely overseas and it looks Russian. That that top upper right hand corner, uh, the wording, the text is definitely Russian or something like that. Ukraine, fucking potato, vodka drinking motherfuckers. Y'all motherfuckers is crazy, you know? And this is one of the reasons why I'd be bugging out when it comes like to all the political shit going on in Russia, this shit. That, I'd be like, yo, these guys are crazy. They don't give a fuck and it's the vodka it's gotta be the vodka it's gotta be the vodka <laughs> who knows what fucking vodka we don't got that type of vodka over here let me tell you that our shit must be watered down all right so we're gonna move over into our next topic let's see what we got here our next topic is going to be um 
my producer gave me all my shit like he, he hooks me up he's my baby he takes care of me thank you very much all right so um we are going to go now this is interesting okay it's about penises we are now moving into the realm of penises now i love my penis and that's about it you know every other guy uh, guy we all love our own penis that's our penis you know what i'm saying but we did come across this interesting article in regards to the perfect sized penis and this has been um put together you know by some obvious you know uh, a journalist and some scientists as well as the most people that could be experienced with penises you know which is people in the porn industry okay now Let's read this off to you because, like I said, this kind of blew my fucking mind. All right. Porn star porn stars say the ideal penis size. OK, if anyone is qualified to weigh in on the perfect penis size or the perfect penis is the people who work with schlongs for a living. OK, and that would be um, Kim Kardashian and porn stars. OK, so the adult uh, adult film actresses have revealed that their ideal specifications in video posted um and this is surprising to everybody is that the the average like the ideal size to them okay is 5.16 inches of course many cocks and schlongols come in many different shapes and sizes some of them are rigid and some of them come with extra ribbing and stds but yeah cocks do come in all different sizes okay um mine is a shape shifter okay it can take on many forms <laughs> but particularly uh the response the responses from um from these particular from these particular um, individuals, it was stated that 5.16 inches, which is 13.12 centimeters uh, in length, uh, that is a perfect size penis. So 5.16 inches in length and 4.59 inches, uh, which is 11.66 centimeters in circumference. Now, let me tell you a little bit about circumference because I learned this today. Uh, we had a Korean uh, science uh, some scientists explain this to me now circumference is this okay when a man holds his penis you know, like that he's gonna hold his penis just like that you know we're gonna jerk it off now for us to go from one end to the other okay that's circumference so when my fingers touch like that that's circumference okay so usually when i'm grabbing my penis it's like this that's my circumference Maybe like this. No, I'm fucking with you. It's more like this. So that's the circumference. That's what circumference means. And when you open that up and you flatten it out, that's where they're getting that length, you know, where they're indicating 5.59 inches, which mine is like 12.69 inches, you know, because my shit goes like this. Um, but yeah, you would think more or less, even with the porn stars, that they would prefer uh, eight, seven to eight inches or more, that that would be the perfect ideal ideal penis. Most of these porn stars, when they go home, their spouses, boyfriends, whatever, they said that they're happy. You know, my, yeah, my boyfriend, he's got a five, five inch penis, six inch penis. And they're saying that that is the perfect size, that it feels great. It's less filling, all of that shit. Um, that's kind of crazy, you know what I'm saying? That must be like a white thing or an Asian thing, you know. You know, as for you know my Latin women out there, because I'm Hispanic myself, you know, our Latin women they they want a little bit longer and a little thicker. Our shit's like a fucking platano, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if you ever seen a platano or a yuca, you know, like a yuca. It's a vegetable, it's brown and shit. It looks just like my dick. So they got this fucking yuca. You know, our shit's real thick and chunky and hearty. You know what I'm saying? You can make a soup out of my shit. You can cut my shit up, put it in a soup, and feed a fucking time army but um yeah 5.16 inches is the ideal penis okay this is not only just with porn stars it's scientifically uh on what they're claiming in this article which is fucking nuts you know so what am i gonna do am i an abomination you know i'm like an x-men and shit i got a big ass cock it's got a healing factor it's it's uh you know unbreakable i have an antimantium cock um what do I do now? Am I considered a freak? Should I be working in the circus? Who knows? But yeah, statistics have proven as well as acknowledgement from porn stars in the industry uh, that they actually prefer a smaller penis. So every time I'm watching these videos with these guys that have penises the size of a fucking, you know, um, 
uh, a fire a firefighter uh, hose that they use on the fire trucks, um, and their shits down to their fucking kneecaps or ankles. Um, and I'm watching most of the porn. That's how all these guys are. Most of these guys are all big. It starts to make me think as well too. Is this because is this something to st- that stimulates the men or something or i don't know because they were most of the porn that's made out there it's obviously for the guys okay they do have female porn which is made specifically for females um straight females as well as lesbian so you know it just makes me wonder it really really does and what does this factor go in with lesbians anyway you know what i'm saying because nine times to the sun most of the lesbian friends that i have um they have fucking dildos obviously and that's another thing that fucks me up about lesbians like you don't need a man some of y'all dress like one act like one you'll take your shirt off won't wear a bra like one but then you say oh we don't need a man i don't want a man but you're using the shape of my penis in order to get pleasure okay why don't y'all just make fucking female vaginas and fuck that you know what i'm saying in real reality it, it just it's kind of it's kind of ironic and fucked up but um most of y'all lesbians be using a dick to get your pleasure but you don't like dick that doesn't make too much sense to me you know what i'm saying that's like you telling me you don't like iced tea um but you drink hot tea like it just doesn't make any sense um but yeah but that's it that was their point of view with the penis thing and ever it makes a little sense it kind of doesn't make a little sense to me but anyway moving on speaking about penises okay this might be completely shocking as we were looking into this this somehow came the fuck up i don't know how okay you know yeah we're fucking crazy i got a lot of shit going on let's talk about turtle dicks now okay now we do have some video footage here look at this motherfucking shit where we got this motherfucker this is a this is a fucking turtle okay fucking a shoe okay it looks like it looks like like a jordan type of shoe let's play this video this fucking turtle okay this is donatello from the teenage mutant ninja turtles and look at the size of this fucking turtle's cock i didn't even know a turtle had a cock this fucking size now look at that shit that is some motherfucking japanese hentai anime horror shit you know turtle dick who was the fucking turtle in motherfucking godzilla wasn't there a turtle what the fuck was his name I don't know what the fuck his name was, but that's the turtle from fucking Godzilla. This motherfucker used to fly and shit. I don't know. I don't know what to say that. Is that prehistoric, prehistoric turtle cock? Like, look at this shit flare out. Like that. Look at that. That's it's coming out of the foreskin. It's coming out of the turtle foreskin right there. That shit looks like a whale's tail. Okay. It looks like a fucking harpoon. It looks like he could stab a motherfucker with that. Slap him around a couple times not even that motherfucker can shovel snow when it snows i'm gonna call this motherfucker because he can shovel snow with his dick that shit looks like a little turtle shovel okay that turtle shovel is gonna bury splinter when he dies i don't know what to say about this shit why does this turtle have a bigger dick than a man okay that's a pretty fucking big and long dick okay that has to be now look at the shoe you see the shoe that dick is as long as that shoe that's at least like a ten nine and a half motherfucking sneaker okay um second of all why are you giving why is your turtle's dick touching your fucking sneaker can you not get it a stuffed turtle can you not get it a fucking stuffed animal i don't know a stuffed rat i don't know get that motherfucking a stuffed april o'neill i don't know but why are you letting this motherfucker i wouldn't even put that shoe back the fuck on i wouldn't clean it with windex there's nothing that's going to make me feel sanitarily safe after the whale fucking turtle cock is touching my fucking jordans no this is ridiculous um i don't know what to do with that you know even as a pet owner if i saw that shit i'd probably kill it because i think it was mutating or alien was coming out of its fucking body that is shit is ridiculous okay so shout out to fucking donatello from the teenage mutant turtles you can check out their new movie coming out um in July, I think it's coming out. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Um, it's PG, so we might not see his cock. But here we got. This is the sex tape of his cock. Fucking some motherfucking Jordans. <laughs> and that's motherfucking mayhem. This is what we do. It's mayhem all fucking day. This is how we do it. I don't know what else to say about this shit. Um, you know, we, we do this shit live. We don't fucking... We really don't plan a lot of this shit. We just grab random shit and, and shoot shit put content out there. 
um but shout out to turtle dicks man i don't know what to do with that you know what i'm saying ladies if you had a turtle if you had a guy that had a turtle dick like that what the fuck would you do you know what i'm saying i don't know what i would do you know what i'm saying i mean not like i'm i'm messing around with dick anyway but if i was a female and that shit happened to me i'd probably be running out of the fucking room screaming my my head off you know what i'm saying that's a fucking horror movie um if anybody knows the name of that fucking turtle that was in godzilla it's gonna fuck with me all day let me know you know what i'm saying i need to know what the fuck that that turtle's name was i want to say mothra but that's the moth right there was mothra there was godzilla damn it a fucking turtle bro and i used to see this shit every fucking you know you saw the shit you know what i'm saying if you were born in the, in the 80s they used to play godzilla's uh movie movies every motherfucking sunday um like right after 12 o'clock and shit they played the kung fu movies and shit and then it would they would blast some godzilla shit or uh you know something of that nature you know what i'm saying um they stopped doing it after a while which is i mean like i said it was pretty dope you know what i'm saying that's that's when i was growing up but um i gotta find out that fucking turtle's name um but yeah but that's it that's the <laughs> that's the craziest shit of the day um fucking turtle dicks man i don't know what to say with that shit all right so we're gonna take a quick music break we'll be right back with some more mayhem uh we're gonna play a quick video robbie max represent from new jersey this track is called i'll show you it's one of his newest projects once again robbie max represent from new jersey dope ass artist make sure you get out there and check him out we'll be right back join my mayhem join it
Um, now, moving on some more news, okay? One of the most interesting things, this is probably the only thing I'm going to do science-wise for today, okay, is in regards to scientists who are actually, uh, you know, we have gone so far with technology these days, you know what I'm saying? Um, there are now particular scientists that are going to be con uh, constructing a device or satellite you know uh that will go out into outer space and be able to actually cloak the entire planet okay now when i saw this article it was very interesting as to why they would even want to do this after reading the article it does explain a lot because you got a lot of main scientists big big dogs okay stephen hawking's himself who have made statements and comments in regards that god forbid another intelligent um life form or life forms aliens themselves who obviously will be more intelligent if they're traveling through space and the, and if they were to find us it might not end well okay it could actually be led to these uh other aliens coming to our planet and taking over our shit uh especially if their technology is more advanced than ours so these scientists have come together stephen hawkins has made this statement that's like it's one of his biggest fears uh for another race of life forms to come visit us and to take advantage of our situation if they are more advanced than us which is very very crazy uh scientists offer a plan to hide the earth from advanced space aliens okay at a time when many astronomers are trying to find um evidence of alien life itself a pair of astronomers at columbia university are exploring what we might do to keep aliens from finding us okay so it really does make a lot of sense. Um, it's something that we all should be concerned of. It's great science, by the way, on how they're actually going to make this happen, uh, utilizing satellites and lasers, okay? That would basically cloak and hide the planet, okay? There's a lot of other features that are involved in what they're doing here in order to protect us, okay? Um, and what's what the craziest thing in the world is that this is all feasible. OK, when it comes down to the science, when it comes down to the energy that they need to produce in order to make this all happen by utilizing lasers, um, the technology that we do have today, we, we, we can do this physically. It can be done, which pretty is, you know, it's, it's even more interesting is that we did come across a video in regards to what they're talking about. And I would like to play that for you guys. Um, my producer, do we have that video available uh, for our viewers to check it out all right so here's the video once again um this explains everything that's going on so we're going to check it out and uh you guys tell me what you think it's a really short video it's not too long It'll take a couple of minutes and uh i'll be right back you guys check out this video sage and mayhem tada hey this is alex from the cool world's lab at columbia university now imagine you are an extraterrestrial civilization living on another planet and for whatever reason, you don't want anybody else to know that you're around. What are you supposed to do in a case like that? Well, if you're a technologically advanced civilization, you might think about building a cloaking device for your planet. Now that might sound like science fiction, but as Professor David Kipping and I have shown in a brand new paper in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society, building a cloaking device for a planet is totally possible. And in fact, we humans could build a cloaking device for the Earth right now. So the Kepler Space Telescope has been a spectacularly successful mission. Astronomers using data from the Kepler Telescope have discovered more than 1,000 planets to date using what's called the transit method. And as you may know, the transit method works by observing small dips in the intensity of starlight as a planet passes in front of a star. So there are these little dips in the starlight. There's missing starlight, in essence, whenever there is a planet passing in front of the star from our point of view. Well, if you want it to cloak a planet, if you want it to make it look like the planet is not there at all, you've got to get rid of that dip. You've got to fill in the missing starlight. And we've calculated that you could totally do this, it's absolutely feasible, to fill in that missing starlight using lasers. This might sound a little counterintuitive because laser beams are very narrow when they are emitted. But if that laser beam travels across many, many light years, that beam widens significantly so that the beam width 
at another solar system might be on the order of tens of millions of kilometers across or more. And so any planet falling within that beam would not observe the dip in the starlight. They would uh, not see our transit at all and they would deduce that there is no planet there at all. And you can do this totally feasibly with modest power requirements. How modest are we talking about? We've calculated that it would take somewhere between 30 and 230 megawatts of power at peak intensity, depending on how you want to do it. The solar array on the International Space Station gathers enough energy to get this amount of power in the course of a single year. And that's just one spacecraft using solar arrays. Now let's say instead of trying to cloak the planet, you just want to make it look like there's no atmosphere on that planet. Can you do that with this laser array? You absolutely can. An atmosphere, like the Earth, say, has many molecular components. And all these molecules leave chemical signatures uh, in the atmosphere in the form of absorption features. So basically, light comes in, these molecules absorb that light, and so there's less light on the other side. So we've calculated that you could get rid of all of these absorption features, fill in all of these dips in the starlight using this same laser array that we're talking about before. You can go even further if you want to get rid of just what are called biosignatures. Astronomers think that the overabundance of molecules like oxygen and ozone in our atmosphere would be a clear sign that there is life on the Earth. If we want to get rid of oxygen and ozone, say, you could do this with only a few hundred kilowatts of power at peak intensity. So you could make the Earth look like it's there, and it has an atmosphere all right, but it has no oxygen and no ozone. Maybe most remarkably, you could use this same laser array to broadcast your presence to other civilizations. The transit, the dip in the starlight caused when a planet passes in front of a star, has a very distinctive shape. It looks sort of like a rounded out uh, trapezoid. But you could use this same laser array to make that shape look artificial. And so another civilization out there might observe this and say, that can't be natural, therefore there has to be an advanced technological civilization living there. And in fact, you could even encode information in these laser beams. You may be wondering why we would want to cloak a planet in the first place. Many scientists, including the famous physicist Stephen Hawking, have suggested that it might actually be dangerous for other civilizations to know uh, that we exist. And they point to certain painful moments in our own history where two civilizations have come in contact for the first time, one civilization being slightly more technologically advanced than the other, and the more technologically advanced civilization has uh, subjugated the less uh, technologically advanced civilization. These are terrible moments in the history of humanity, and we certainly wouldn't want something like that to happen on a planetary scale. So we have to be very cautious about uh, making our presence known uh, to other civilizations and a cloaking device would be one way. If we decided that we absolutely did not want to be discovered, we could cloak our presence this way. Now this may all sound like science fiction to you, uh, but the progress humanity has made, technological progress humanity has made in the last hundred years, makes it clear that we absolutely do need to be thinking seriously about these kind of questions. If you're interested in the technical details, I would encourage you to check out our paper published in the monthly notices Royal Astronomical Society. And as always, if you like what you see, please subscribe below and we'll see you around the galaxy. All right, so this is fucking crazy. This is mayhem. Now, it's dope. On the level of science of this, it's fucking insane. But what else is kind of like, you know, there's a couple of like, um, it's a little misleading to certain degrees. It also rises a lot of questions for me. If most of you guys know out there, okay, uh, years ago, we sent out satellites, um, you know, with information on these satellites. You've got TV, videos, images. Um, they put scientific information in this, and they sent this motherfucker out there, you know, in case anybody finds it, you know, sending off radio signals as well. Um, now we're going to put a cloak up, okay, to let them know that we're not around. And I think that's dope too. There, it, there should be some type of safety. It is gonna, to a certain degree, it's gonna save us. But 
here's the thing you heard him mention that they would be able to do something with the atmosphere where uh with these lasers that would basically make it seem like the planet is not sustainable okay like it doesn't have a good atmosphere there's no life on the planet but i think any intelligent being that's gonna see all that fucking blue water as well as the greenery okay on the landscapes and all that they're gonna see that and then just basically say it's not gonna make sense okay um there obviously has to be sustainable water and air in order for these plants to fucking grow so if they're going to see any type of green areas then it's going to be hugely you know that's the thing i look at i'm like shit man you know it's a great idea but where are you motherfuckers actually thinking about this shit you know like you're, you're thinking about all this other stuff but it sounds like you forgot about sending this fucking satellite out into the solar system or out into the galaxy uh years ago with all of our a lot of our technical information um i believe this 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 uh this device or whatever the satellite that they sent out there um it also has like our genetic coding and makeup in there like it basically lets them know whoever finds this and hears these messages it's letting them know that we're out there okay i don't know specifically if it actually gives coordinates to where we're at i i i highly doubt that they didn't do that you know what i'm saying i think they would do that because stephen hawkins himself really didn't come up with this idea until the last couple of years okay um where he personally thinks that you know our worst because uh you know our apocalypse to his version of the apocalypse that has nothing to do with religion it has to do with other alien life forms coming over here and taking over our planet because we might not be as intelligent or sophisticated um or advanced in science as they are and that makes a lot of sense too because if they're coming over to visit us we haven't even gone as far as our own moon man wise you know a, a, a spacecraft um you know with, with people on it we've only been able to send out uh drone type of satellites you know that we can either control uh, manually control or put on all autopilot you know so um i do think it's such a sensational idea and everything um and i'm not trying to shit on nobody or either but those are the things that mentally just popped up into my head like whoa wait a minute sir. so we're gonna do all this and what about all these other factors which i just mentioned i didn't hear this guy actually mention any of that shit none of it so um that's the only thing that concerns me about this i really think it's a dope and crazy idea it's not some star wars motherfucking predator star trek shit you know james kirk can't fuck with us but there are some other concerns it's like hey you don't want them to know about us but that shit's out there are we going to recall that satellite does that satellite come back to us so that we can not let people know we're out there because you know you're cloaking the planet at the same time but yet you still got that device out there which is broadcasting radio signals trying to communicate with other life forms so like i said dope sensational idea hopefully they put that into consideration because that kind of does concern me and it's you know it's kind of like stupid on top of this great idea so it's like hey hide us oh by the way we got this device out there that's letting people know where the fuck we're at and what we're about so it's kind of like hey guys this is not it's not balancing out a little bit um but crazy dope uh dope science thing man you know what I'm saying I'm not gonna bore you guys anymore with that I love science and this was very interesting to me um I do got some more shit for you now I don't got pictures and stuff like that but this is something one of our segments which is called uh mayhem music facts okay if you follow us on social media and stuff like that I'm always posting very interesting uh music facts which I call mayhem music facts all right so fact one which is pretty dope and this is you know some basic common stuff some of them might blow your mind some of them might blow a load in your pants some of them might just be some normal regular shit you might even know some of the shit you know it's pretty much common knowledge that's available out there you know we go online and we check the shit out and like i said this is some stuff that we're going to be doing for you guys every week we're going to try to give you guys some videos every week where you can get a visual of us as well as the radio uh portion now when it comes to the radio stuff what we do on the radio at it's being radio.com it'll be more of a radio show where we'll be i'll be playing more continuous music the video uh the video version which you can go to sage and uh i'm sorry youtube.com forward slash sage and tyler uh you can get more of a visual we'll, we'll be doing interviews with artists uh some of them might come out to the studio we'll do some exclusive stuff i could even uh call them in you know through skype and put them on the screen with us and have an amazing interview where you could see everything and they can also participate 
uh, with us. So if you are an artist, you're a comedian, you're an actor, author, uh, you're in some type of industry field, you know, you got something crazy going on, you know, we interview anybody. Okay, so if you'd like to get on the show, you can hit me up. You can either call 973-273-3744 or you can hit me up on email at sajintyler at hotmail.com. That's S-A-Y-J-I-N-T-Y-L-E-R at hotmail.com. Hopefully, you know how to spell hotmail.com. Um, but yeah, if you're looking for an interview, please hit us up. We're always looking for interesting uh, interesting people to interview. Um, that's pretty much what we do, man. So let's check out these Mayhem Music facts, all right? Now, this one's pretty dope, man. I'm a big-ass Bob Marley fan. I love the ganja, man. Jamming. So, you know, this is pretty dope. Now, when in his boat, okay, and it sank off the Jamaican coast, Chris Blackwell, okay, who is the producer who first discovered bob marley okay was found near to death okay by a bunch of uh rasta fishermen okay once again this was off of the jamaican coast all right this guy nearly died they found him and they nursed him back to full health um chris blackwell and these rasta fishermen they had formed such a bond together Okay, that this guy went back and fell he fell in love with the culture so much that when he returned back, he put in large investments into the island's music, which is one of the reasons why we now know Bob Marley today. He is the person who was responsible for Bob Marley. And that's pretty dope, man. You know what I'm saying? In that particular situation, you know, when ARs or producers, they're meeting these guys, they're going out to events, they're going out to concerts. This guy was like on vacation on a boat and got fucked up, shipwrecked. They found his body. He was he was almost nearly dead. And these people were so nice enough to take care of him, nurse him back to health, and you know it's such a small world and they were so you know they're involved with their music and here comes this guy out of nowhere and says you know i love this music and culture so much i'm gonna invest money into this and um you know that's what that's how we got to know bob marley you know what i'm saying we probably would have never heard of bob marley you know he probably would have never got off of the island his music would have never left the island you know so um i think that's really super dope man so shout out to uh to Chris Blackwell for, for that amazing story, you know, and some shit we don't know. Another mayhem music fact. Now, this is one is, you know, to me, it's pretty dope. Not to everybody, but check this out. According to the study by British Academy of Sound Therapy, okay, there is a song out there, okay, the song Weightless by Marconi Union is considered the most relaxing song ever recorded on the planet. Okay, I personally have not heard the song, but I will. Okay, I'm gonna go put the song into my headphones every night and even during certain types uh, times of the day. I like to do a little meditation or, re or relaxation to relax my mind, relax my body. So when I go tonight, I listen to uh, certain types of music that help me relax to go to sleep. I also listen to certain music um, that helps me think and process. You know, study harder, focus, focus more. Um, there's a lot of different stuff that you can go out there and, and find that'll help you in all different applications of your life. So if you need to rest, there's some type of music there. You got a lot of stress and anxiety. They have certain types of music and they combine it with certain um, isotonic tones and beta bunch of shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they call them bi binaural. I don't fucking know. Go out there and find the shit. I don't make the music. I just listen to the shit. Um, but yeah, they do have really amazing um, music out there or sounds that can help you with all levels of, um, of uh, what would you call that? I guess all levels of like stress, you know, fatigue, to study harder, you know, to concentrate better. Um, but yeah, this song, once again, Weightless, okay, by Marconi Union. It's the most relaxing song on the planet. Okay, did you know that shit? Because I didn't know that shit, and that's another mayhem music fact. Um, a shopping mall in Australia, which is which I think this is dope. A shopping mall in Australia is now using classical music, okay, in their malls uh, to actually discourage and stop teenagers from loitering on the premises. Now, I'm from Jersey. I think we already have that shit and it, it don't really work. You know what I'm saying? Not a hundred percent. 
But I do hear this now. I've had heard it for the last couple of years while I'm walking in the mall, and they're playing just specifically. It used to be like an elevator music, you know, like a、um, more classic and contemporary type of music that plays like very lightly in the mall and even inside the stores. They, you know, they all have their different variations of music for their customers.、Um, but this was just super crazy, and it, it's actually working. It's actually working that they're now.、Um, Sharing this information and putting it in a lot of other different places in Australia, as well as other countries、uh, that are now utilizing this for their、uh, shopping areas as well, too, to basically、um, you know, decrease the amount of teenagers that are just chilling at the mall and causing trouble and you know, making out and shit, getting blowjobs by the water fountain. This is basically, you know, it's a great idea. And it's amazing on how it actually is working. You know what I'm saying? I might have to try to use this, use this on, on my kid. You know what I'm saying? So、uh, he could stop his bullshit and <laughs> pay more attention in school.、Um, our next Mayhem music fact is there is a metal band called Hate Beak. And I love this, man. You got to get out on YouTube and check this shit out.、Um, the idea of it is just funny as hell. Now, they are a music band, they, they are a metal band. And, and they're called Hate Beak. Their lead singer is an African gray parrot. Not a person. It's a fucking parrot. And these guys got views. These guys are making money. These guys are doing fucking shows. Now, the parrot really doesn't sing or anything like that. It just does a bunch of screaming and squawking.、Um, but for some reason, people love this shit. They got albums out there. People are buying it. Um, but yeah, crazy amazing fucking mayhem fact, music fact.、Uh, there's a metal band called Hate Beak, and their lead singer is an African gray parrot. I wonder if that parrot, you know, like, you know how after a show and shit, you got all the groupies and shit. I wonder if he has groupies. I wonder if there's females out there that want to suck his African gray parrot dick.、Um, I would really love to, love to see that shit. You know what I'm saying? Can you imagine seeing in the news,、um, you know, lead singer from Hate Beak? Uh, gets groupie pregnant. <laughs> you know, like, it's just some crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? They're going to have to do a motherfucking、um, DNA test and all that shit. It's going to come up positive that you're half parakeet. <laughs> so, anyway,、uh, next Mayhem music fact、uh, composer Sun Ra. Okay. Sun Ra is a composer, once performed、uh, for catatonics and schizophrenia.、Uh, schizophrenics. Um, at a local hospital. Believe it or not, when this guy was actually playing his music, okay, and once again, he is a composer, okay,、um, he was playing in a room filled with people who were in catatonic states, comas, and people as well as,、uh, who were suffering from schizophrenia.、Um, one of these actual patients broke out of a years long silence, years, to ask him, Do you call that music? Okay, which was exceptional because, as stated, this guy didn't speak for years. He was catatonic.、Um, but yeah, Sun Ra, the composer, and, and he's pretty well known, you know what I'm saying?、Um, performed for catatonics and schizophrenics、uh, and actually broke somebody out of their own silence for years who made the statement, Do you call that music? So that's pretty dope. I would have punched the motherfucker in the face. I、um, was like, That's all you got to fucking say?、Um, that's pretty crazy. Now, check this out.、Um, This is not a mayhem. You gotta just check this out. This, has to, this is not just about music. This is actually about a toy, particular toy brand,、uh, which is called Mattel. If you all know Mattel, Mattel has made dozens and dozens of、uh, fantastic products、uh, for children for many years.、Um, Mattel filed a lawsuit against Aqua's Records, claiming that their hit song, Barbie Girl, Damaged their Barbie brand after, fi-、um, after finding MCA Records not guilty. The judge concluded his opinion by writing, The parties are advised to chill. Okay, this was actually st- stated by the judge. And yes, Mattel filed a lawsuit against a, against a band, a group,、um, that created a song called Barbie Girl. And、um, their claim was that this particular Barbie Girl. Uh, song damaged the Barbie Girl brand. I really don't find that, I don't, I don't believe that at all. I'll be quite honest with you. Barbie has been around for years, okay?、Um, they have come up with so many different variations of the Barbie product itself 
So I really don't think that they were, you know, I think they did suffer under certain circumstances in regards to uh, acquiring, you know, money for their products. You know, things slow down, whatever. Um, but I really don't think it had anything to do with the goddamn song. It was probably more or less because if you really know the Barbie product, it was many years before they created a Hispanic Barbie, a black Barbie. You know, all these Barbies were made blonde hair, blue eyes. You know, now they got all these different varieties of Barbie. They even got a fucking Barbie that's pregnant. Okay. And no, she's not from the hood. It's regular white fucking Barbie. Okay. Um, kind of like that MTV show, Teen Moms and shit. Um, but yeah, they, they, they actually did this shit. So I think they were just dealing with some um, fluctuations in regards to their marketing uh, advertising as well too um, because they weren't really reaching out to everybody in the market and they were basically forcing everyone okay all we got is this blonde hair blue eyed Barbie or maybe the brown the brunette or a redhead but there was no you know diversity with the ethnic uh, variations to the to the doll you know what I'm saying so you had a lot of people that was basically like you know the Hispanics we don't want to buy a fucking blonde hair blue eyed fucking Barbie doll we want a Barbie doll that's motherfucking tan got brown hair brown eyes big ass hoop earrings and shit gold chain you know what I'm saying uh, maybe an apron you know who knows you know what I'm saying um, but yeah that's basically I really think that was more or less what really happened but yeah they were they were basically pathetic enough to fi file a lawsuit against a record label to get some extra money i really would like to know how much the lawsuit was for um because most of these artists and bands they don't even make enough to compete with mattel um you know mattel whatever mattel's making on a yearly basis for their barbie dolls i don't think an artist could even compare to that price you know what i'm saying i'm looking at when it comes to a toy uh, industry you're looking at millions and millions of dollars maybe possibly billions i personally think mattel with the barbie uh, product it has to be a million dollar uh franchise um now moving forward richard nixon and this is uh, i found funny i'm really not a big fan of richard nixon as a president regardless but richard nixon was a fan of rap music i don't know how that's really possible 100 percent. you know i really don't um obviously nixon was not around 100 percent during that era um you know the, the rap music was not it shouldn't have been around during his era or reign as president for the United States, maybe afterwards, you know, during the, the, the late 70s and 80s and further on. But in 1990, an interview with New York Times, uh, Richard Nixon had said, I often thought that if there had been a rap group around in my days, I might have chosen a different career in music instead of politics. Are you fucking kidding me? I am not a crook. You know, busting out some motherfucking gangster raps. I find this fucking hysterically. I did actually make sure I like I double researched this one. It's actually true. He did make the statement. It's a little awkward, but hey man, did you know that? And that's motherfucking mayhem. Richard Nixon, if he had the choice, would have become possibly one of the greatest rappers. All he would have been the first Eminem. You know, we would have called him Nixon M. Or Nixon. <laughs> who the fuck knows dude but yeah richard nixon um if there was uh, rap music out there he would have chose a career in uh, music instead of politics and it's not like he would have went into rock it's not like he would have went into heavy metal or anything like that. he would wanted to go into rap music it's just crazy um but i hope you enjoyed this man make sure you leave a like leave some comments if there's anything specifically you'd like to hear us talk about uh on the show um please reach out to us let us know you know what we're doing and of course check us out on social media please subscribe to our youtube channel which is uh youtube.com forward slash sage and tyler and you can subscribe once again hit that like button uh share please share you know and if there's anything that you want us to share you got a music video you're looking for an interview uh, you wrote a book, you're a comedian, actor, movie, anything out there, man. If you're looking for interviews and a little bit more exposure out there, then come join us in the Sage and Tyler show. And, uh, you know, we'll get you on here and we'll have a fun old time. Just make sure that you understand that I'm on the fucking mayhem and anything goes. Anything. Anything goes. So, yeah, 
I'm out of here, man. Once again, I'm Sage and Mayhem Tyler. You can always check us out on Thursday nights. You can check out our radio show from 10 p.m. till 12 a.m. Eastern stand, uh, Standard Time at Sajin.com on HBM Radio. You can also check out our videos once again on YouTube. Uh, forward, uh, youtube.com forward slash Sage and Tyler and of course on our social media all you got to do is at Sage and Tyler for everything okay um, you can also do at It's BM Radio we're on Instagram Facebook and everything uh, and the same for Sage and Tyler man but until then and also make sure you check out Indie Republic and all the other shows that are um, you know that come through that network through Indie Republic but once again I'm out of here I'm Sage and Mayhem Tyler I hope you enjoyed the mayhem check me out next time I'll see you later. Peace. On the rail, I could take any one of you. Make a career disappear from right in front of you. Call me a trick, I'll be the first one to bury you. Then sympathize with your fam, crying at your funeral. Humble, but I'm ready to rumble. I bring my spot and ancestors from the rubble. Make you crumble, then I shall tell a swift what it's really like to be in some trouble. In the city, but I rap like the jungle. They really scared that I'll say something reckless. Sending links without a message, looking kind of desperate. And I ain't fuck with you either, cause all you spit is an eager And I am patiently waiting the monarchs, you could all catch the ether Cause I'm charged up, every rapper in my city bought up Martyrs, willing to sacrifice for the cause I ain't good for a girl, I'm good for every fucking body You gon' make me drink the headlines or really just catch a body Yeah, it's hard out here for a bitch Getting every guy to notice that I'm moving while they drifting Any sucker wanna judge me, it's the looping of my pen And you don't wanna see the voodoo that your name is put up in I mean you literally can't reach me, that's a visual you'll never get You owe me residual payments, you can't be flexing yet Got your boyfriend wondering if I'm a dominatrix Cause he likes to play the sub in the cypher, get to striking him Deep breath, calm now, P told me to calm down A lot of you need help, so why don't I write your bars now? We ain't gotta tell him on some Quentin Miller shit And I may not have a trophy, but the team know what it is Heavy hitters in the whip, I'm quiet but don't twist it Listening to feed the hunger, really flip this Superpower misfits. I'm Curtis Dawn and some lipstick. Give them triple X like exhibit. And I don't really care if you feel it. Cause either way you press play, everybody catching feelings. It's crazy what the skin has been in through. Never knew a heart I pushed through. Man, I'm so obsessed with my craft that I'm losing it fast. Now my friends are invisible, Caillou. Yeah, I gave it all for the culture, gave it all for the crew. Gave it all just to give it to you. I swear I believe in hip hop. I be, I live, I breathe and give, I see you spit. So you know what it is? And that's my manifesto. If they want it, they could get it gusto. Uh, and all my ladies really cutthroat. If somebody wanted more than us, tell me where they at, though.